Today, Doctor. Today, we will have fun. Other days, I've told you who it is. Today, you can work it out for yourself. Maybe that will move things forward for me. Wait. You already know who killed Dr. Jesus Christ. Dr. Decker? What's wrong with me today? Or generally in this game. I think leaning towards a microphone while typing screws with my uh, center or something, as opposed to just casually using a keyboard all the time. So you've told me before. What are you trying to get me to say? Alright. He's apparently told me who killed Dr. Decker before, but uh, apparently whenever he killed, whenever he tells me who kills Dr. Decker, he just loops again and then it gets undone. So presumably, at least from his perspective, he can't tell me, even though he knows, if he knows, which could always be not true, because he could just be lying for the sake of it. He could have killed Dr. Decker and might be deflecting blame elsewhere, or it's also possible that he may uh, just be panicked about who gets in trouble for this kind of thing a little bit, and so he's deflecting it to other people, which is noteworthy for the fact that he is the character that accuses uh, Claire of doing stuff, so... If people are accusing other people, then, like, that's not necessarily because they know something, but also just because they want to get away from being caught themselves. Oh, right, he was hooking up with Mariana. Things have been interesting. Thanks to Mariana. Interesting. Also, feel free to say more than one sentence in a row. When I ask you a question, you can just complete the thought, so I don't have to prompt you. We went on a date. Well, sort of. She texted me this bar she was going to, and I just turned up. She can dance. I was transfixed most of the night. Next thing I know, I'm lying in my bed, at home. The room's spinning. The day moved forward. In fact, every night I go and watch Mariana dance, the day moves forward. Do you think Mariana likes me? Interesting she can dance, considering she's a mermaid! Or something, maybe. Hard to be sure. Uh, let's see. I could ask Mariana about Nathan a bit. So every time that Nathan encounters Mariana, she actually makes it into the next day each time. Which is interesting. She has a weird power where she seems to hypnotize people and they follow them, and it might be overriding his power that loops the day. But it's still kind of concerning because he, uh... What happens is, uh, he... What is it? Um, he seems to lose perspective. He seems to not be aware of what happens in the middle. He goes and sees her dance, and then he just wakes up the next day. And that's all? There's nothing in the middle? So, like, shouldn't he be a little alarmed? Like, he... Maybe he's just so gratified by the idea of moving forward in time because of how much he's time he spends being stuck, he doesn't question it. But the fact that it, a whole chunk of his day seems to disappear like that is kind of alarming. And he should probably be a little worried about that. Let's talk to Mariana for a bit. How are you? I'm fine, Doctor. I went to the beach, swam under the sea, and returned to tell the tale. No blackouts. Nothing. You went to the beach. I've got nothing to say. No blackouts. Like I said, I've been fine. Alright then, how about the prescription pad? Why would someone steal Dr. Decker's prescription pad? I didn't even know he had one. You didn't know that a doctor had a prescription pad? Okay, you didn't know he had one? No. Death threats. I prefer actions over words, Doctor. You know that. Oh, wow. That's not an appropriate time to say something like that. I prefer actions over words. I would have just killed him instead of saying something about him. Like, why do you know? <laughs> Don't frame yourself as an avid killer. Like, that's a really concerning approach to take. Let's ask about Nathan. I don't have anything to say about that. Have you met Nathan? I can't really answer that. Dancing at the club? I've done lots of dancing. 
lots of clubbing, lots of socializing. Okay, where do we go with you? Uh, Dr. Decker. You'll have to ask me something else. Okay, feeling a little trapped with you then. Let's see, so I asked how you're doing. There wasn't a very obvious path to go down with that necessarily. Let's see, you swam. You swam in the ocean. I don't have an answer. You swam in the ocean. Let's spell it correctly this time. I don't know anything about that. Nothing is going anywhere. Okay, so I asked how you're doing. I asked about the death threats and the prescription pad. I asked about Nathan. Nathan watches you dance. Has Nathan followed you? People follow me into the sea. I don't force them, they just follow to see the creature. Uh, achievement unlocked slightly mad. What is th That's. That might be bad. <laughs> A practitioner. Doctor, you're doing great. That's a lot of questions. You're understanding them. <laughs> Almost 2,000 searches. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh yeah, this game is super over. 94% progress overall, and we're more than halfway through this particular act. Damn. Here we go, then. At midnight. I don't know why it has to replay them all every time. It, it's a, it's a, uh, replay, the recap's a nice feature when you launch the game, but it's weird that when you go, go into the little pause menu, it happens. I can only assume that maybe when you click on that, it's actually going to legitimately, like, the actual main menu, because this... Is this game on phones? I can see it being on phones, considering how it's generally set up, and how compressed the video is, and how the... There's on-screen stuff at all times, and like, in, a lot of PC games just trust you to hit escape instead of clicking on a top corner touchpad. Like, yeah, this whole, this whole looks... this very... Mouse interface, uh, mouse oriented like a, a game from a phone usually is because they have, need to have touch screen interface all over the screen, all the way down to having this button next to the send as if you're gonna, as if people are gonna click on this instead of hitting enter when they finish typing on a on a physical keyboard. All right, so they go to see the creature. I don't know about. I'm not sure what you'd call it. A wisp. A star? It's so bright and warm and loving. I don't know why it leaves me. It only wants the others. It... it feeds on them. Terrifying. <laughs> Easily the most concerning and scary part of the entire of the entirety of all the characters in this thing is this this character that like seems to lure hundreds of people to their deaths underwater and where some sort of monster devours them all. <laughs> Everyone else looks so innocent by comparison. It feeds on them. When I look down, I black out. But if I can just keep looking forward. No blackouts. I can just swim back to the top when it's finished. It's so warm and loving, and then it devours them all whole blah, rip and tear. Like what the the hell of a gap. It's, it clearly has some kind of effect on people's minds if it if they can think it's loving when it's like straight up eating everybody you called it loving or let's see you look down you really want to know if i look down it's writhing just limbs of people from the clubs and the bars not just from this week but last week last month last year they all look Terrified, but somehow still alive. The creature. It's all inside them, poking holes through them that they shouldn't have. 
it just eats them. Slowly. And it just keeps doing it over and over again, and she keeps doing it? Her entire character seems like almost like some sort of Lovecraftian version of like an angler fish. That's the name of the fish, right? The one that has the glowing tentacle thing off coming off its forehead. There's a little glowing bulb and it lures people in and then it eats them. Like, and what comes to mind is also there's a variant of that in Devil May Cry 4 where a giant, there's like a giant toad creature that has like a glowing bulb that goes out in front of it, except that instead of being an anglerfish ball, uh, it's a, uh, it's this dancing woman that lures you, that's supposed to lure the character in. And then when you're, and when you're lured in by this woman, then the giant mouth of the monster comes in and devours you. Like, what if she's, what if she is on the end of, like, this big, long, psychic tether, and, she, and, and she's just instinctively luring people into the maw over and over again because she's actually a part of the creature, even if she's not aware of it, because, and she's just driven by instinct to keep feeding them back to the thing that feeds everyone, and so on. That's, uh, terrifying. Why do you keep doing it? That's not something I know. One of the biggest issues with the not actually being a therapist part of this game is that, like, that's like the first question you'd want to ask, but how would you, you ask it? They're still alive. I don't have any... Eating them slowly. The missing people. That's where they go. I don't know I'm doing it. I swear I don't, Doctor. The creature. I hear it. It's hungry. Nobody can know. It's our secret. Okay, that fits. I remember from before, uh, she, she talked about how she always knows what direction the ocean's in at all times, and it's, that adds to the idea of the psychic tether idea that I had earlier, like if she's specifically tied to it, like an anglerfish thing, like that'd be, that'd be part of that. She always knows how to get back to it because she has to, because it's part of her secret. It's our secret. What will you tell people that I'm feeding people to a creature at the bottom of the ocean? What proof do you have? You can't tell on me. You know what you do to me. When you visit. I let you do it because sometimes I'm ashamed of what I've done. You make me feel like I deserve it. Okay, that's really fucked up. <laughs> so on top of the mass murdering nightmare thing she's up to, now we're finding that we're implying that I am unconsciously visiting her and doing stuff, apparently. That I probably don't even want to know, to be honest. But, uh... That raises some questions. Does Bryce ever find this? I'm wondering how these timelines work out, because Bryce spies on me, but Bryce only looks at... Does Bryce only look at an empty house? He didn't mention me being in the house, he just mentions seeing the house and that's it. They deserve it. It's my fault they're all dying. They're following me. Why don't I follow you into the sea? No, I've not been thirsty. Not since I went back to the sea. Thirsty? <laughs> Wait. Like thirsty for me? Is that what we're saying here? Because that, that, that had nothing to do with what I said at all. That was confusing. It's our secret. What will you tell people? That I'm feeding people to a creature at the bottom of the ocean? What proof do you have? You can't tell on me. You know what you do to me. When you visit. 
I let you do it because sometimes I'm ashamed of what I've done. You make me feel like I deserve it. When I visit... You get inside me, doctor. And it hurts. And you don't care. What I do to you... No. Nope. Nope, that's dead end. Inside you... I don't have an answer for you. It... It hurts. I don't know any... It hurts and I don't care. That's not something I know about. Uh, what the fuck is going on? Now we're implying really dark things going on with me, although it's hard to tell whether or not it's even part of my character's personality or if it's some sort of weird mind control thing going on because people behave so strangely around her that it's hard to tell what the fuck it even means. The missing people. I never said missing people specifically. I can't explain what happened with John. He followed me back from the bar that night and swam with me under the ocean. I blacked out. He'd gone. John? I don't know about- You must have read about John in the news. He was a local student who went missing. He was a looker. And he had a way with words, but he was also a cheat. The creature liked eating him a lot. But I can't explain what happened next. What happened next? I left him to be eaten. And the next morning, he turns up in my bed at my house. He's not wet at all. No signs he's been in the sea, but he has holes in him. Lots of holes. His inside is on the outside. Just a ball of tangled worms. And now they're blaming me, but you knew that, Doctor, didn't you? That's why I'm here. And that's what's going on, right? This The psychic tether, the creature, it's all like an imaginary thing because she's just a murderer, isn't she? That does horrible things to people. And she doesn't know why, so she contextualizes it with this great creature, but the what and it seems like she generally uh, kills them elsewhere where they won't be found, or maybe even kills them at sea or something like that. But this one specifically, she apparently killed at home, it would seem, and that's why she's why they're going after her. It still raises questions about me though, and how I'm apparently doing stuff, unless that's also just Something she's saying in a delusional manner, because they could all be completely delusional. You killed John. No. The creature killed John. There is no creature. The creature does not exist. Worms. I've got nothing to say. <laughs> like, maybe that'll be the follow-up. I left him to be eaten. And the next- They blame... They blame you for... John's death. I can't really- Dead end also. In your bed. You'll have to ask- Okay, let's try again. I left him to be eaten. And the next morning, he turns up in my bed, at my house. He's not wet at all. No signs he's been in the sea, but he has holes in him. Lots of holes. His inside is on the outside. 
just a ball of tangled worms. And now they're blaming me, but you knew that, doctor, didn't you? That's why I'm here. Why you're here? They think I killed John. John and some others. They need to know whether I'm insane or not. Insane? My lawyer. He says I'm insane, but that he needs you to rubber stamp it. Do you think I'm insane, doctor? Yes, you are quite insane one way or another. Thank you, doctor. That's all I ever needed to hear you say. I feel like she's going to do something really bad now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All you needed? I don't know about that. Oh, right, the loan. That was from a while ago. Dr. Decker asked for his loan back after diagnosing me as sane. In his opinion, my blackouts and everything else were fictional. He had no proof, of course, either way, or I'd be cured, but he asked for his money back, and I didn't have it. Did you kill Dr. Decker? That's not something I know about. Didn't have the money? No. Asked for his loan back. Diagnose you sane. Dr. Decker was a hack. You're special. You're good at your job. You know I have problems. Problems. I've got nothing to say. Special. I don't have- Decker was a hack. There are similarities, but you're not the dead doctor. Are you feeling okay? I'll uh, chalk that up as being one of the times that I don't know what she thinks I said. <laughs> Dr. Decker asked for his loan back after diagnosing me as sane. In his opinion, my blackouts and everything else were fictional. He had no proof, of course, either way, or I'd be cured, but he asked for his money back, and I didn't have it. Did I use the ex No, I never used the exact phrase, asked for his, honey his money back. That'll probably work. So I'm wondering what's going on here specifically. It's one of two things. Uh, so when I talk, when I play games like Mass Effect 2 involving Morden Solus or Mass Effect Andromeda involving characters like Drac and PB, for example, I point out the idea that the writers clearly seem to care more about certain characters than other characters. In Mass Effect 2, Jacob is a very, very low, just barely developed character, for example, while Morden is like the love of the writer's life and has the most detail and quirks and so many little side things that come up and there's so much love put into writing the character, for example. And I've and I'm wondering some of that here because uh, when I look at the char the character list, oops, it definitely feels like some of these people get way, 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 way more development and direction and stuff like that than some of the other ones do uh, from phase to phase. But with Mariana in particular having this really elaborate thing going on and Claire by comparison actually kind of having like a relatively not super detailed development as things go on and but there's and I could be right but there's there's of course two big question marks that could add to that thing of course which is that uh, an amount of the dialogue is optional so it might be that I'm finding more optional dialogue for her that leads to seeming like there's more development although the, her, the grandness of her story and the spectacle of it and the scale of it and the way that it develops so much per chapter kind of makes it feel like it does have genuinely more scale than the other ones do the other thing though could be is that as far as I can tell I believe one of the things this game does is it, ra it randomly selects a murderer we'll get back to that later and how I feel about that during the credits I think but uh 
uh, the murderer changes each playthrough, basically. So it could be that there's a whole bunch of extra dialogue that's added for the one that is the murderer to develop that concept. And I'm leaning more and more towards the idea that, that uh, Mariana might be the one who was the murderer. Uh, she doesn't have the kind of, uh, she doesn't have the kinds of alibis that the other ones are kind of claiming lately. Not really. Uh, and she's, a pe she's basically admitting to murder indirectly. And she sees her, uh, she points to this idea that, that, uh, that I'm special and doctor, and the other one was a hack and the other doctor wasn't giving her what she needed. Uh, and it might've been, a, this whole thing might be a bit of a false thing. Because Ellen, uh, outright asks to be claimed, uh, to be called temporarily insane, and it seems so, it seems so convenient for what she wants that she would ask for that, and it seems like it'd be a bad idea to give it to, that to her, because it seems like she's manipulating you. Uh, but Mariana has a much more spectacular story, which honestly points more to the idea of it being fabricated, that somebody would invent these crazy stories but my baby by just reading a bunch of horror novels and stealing the ideas whole cloth from them and and is just playing this role. And like this all the way down to the where she has a spooky necklace and like all these other things. Like she might and the way that she constantly stares at you like she's trying to manipulate you sexually or something like that. Like it seems like she might be completely sane and just a murderer. Like, and just a terrible person, and she's fabricating these elaborate stories to make herself seen as insane and possible so that she can be declared as being insane. And that's not great news. Especially since the idea that she apparently manipulated Decker into getting, giving him money, and then when he asks his money back, he shows up dead? After the loan was already written in a way so that he would, uh... uh the money, the loan would be forgiven if he died in the process? It's like... So much of the story points to her being the murderer. Asked for his money back. Why would I do that? Dr. Decker transferred our loan agreement to Clara Castleford. She bought him out. I owe her the money now. Say what? <laughs> Wait, say what? Uh, Claire? She's the woman that took over the loan I had with Dr. Decker. Transferred the loan. I don't have an answer. Transferred the loan. I don't know why she did it, but Dr. Decker got repaid, and now my agreement is with Claire. You should ask her. That one line of dialogue didn't have noise removal applied to it correctly, so it sounded staticier than all the other ones. Weird. One missed detail. Sorry, I pick up on things like that because I work with that. <laughs> I'm so familiar with those little moments. I'm like, huh, interesting. This one particular dialogue isn't, uh, isn't, no, isn't, it's missing a few post-processing steps. Let's see. All right, well, Claire, let's ask about Mariana. She's not accusing you of murder, so this should be relatively safe. I don't really know the girl, but I did buy out her loan from Dr. Decker. I mainly did it to shut him up about it. But can you imagine having him as a creditor? That poor girl. I hope it didn't accrue anything more than interest. 